Aside from plants, are there other living items like trees, insects, and animals where you're concerned that genetic modification will cause problems? Right now, everything with DNA is being targeted. The gene editing technique is so inexpensive that they want to basically patent anything with DNA, get it out there and make money. There's a company called Oxitec, which has genetically modified mosquitoes um, designed to kill off the population of the mosquito that carries dengue and Zika. And I remember testifying at a mosquito control board in Key West because they wanted in to release it in the Keys. And a scientist, so-called scientist from Oxitec was speaking as well. And afterwards I asked Derek, I said, I said, have you tested to see if the saliva of the, of the mosquitoes that bite humans has, is altered because of the genetic engineering process? Obviously, if it is altered, it gets in our bloodstream and that could be a problem. He said, we're just now looking to see if the protein produced by the inserted gene is expressed in the saliva. And I'm thinking, a little late, buddy. You've already released millions of mosquitoes in four countries, and you've never looked at the portion of the mosquito that gets into human blood. You're an idiot. <laughs> um, but I actually, you know, in poker, I see you and raise you. I said, Derek, you know, there was a study done on human cells where they inserted a single gene, and up to 5% of the functioning genes in that cell changed their levels of expression, producing more proteins, less proteins, switching on, switching off. Wouldn't it make sense to do a complete analysis of the saliva and not just look for one protein? And his response was, good idea. So these are the brain cells behind genetically modified mosquitoes. Uh, and it's interesting, they got kicked out of the Cayman Islands. The Cayman Islands, were, 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 they were going to do an island-wide release. And they decided, well, let's do one more trial. So they did a trial, and it was a failure. So then Oxitec convinced them to pay for another trial. They did another trial, and quietly Oxitec just left town, fired all their employees, and we, we understand that it was a failure as well. So their response is, oh, now we have 2.0. Now we have a different technology in our mosquitoes. That, so and it turns out there's other, there's other techniques that are way safer, and way uh, less controversial that many countries are doing. And Oxitec has all these different types of insects in their pipeline trying to basically take over the insect market. There's genetically modified fish being sold in Canada, which might cause increased allergic reactions, might be linked to cancer. We have higher levels of IGF-1 in the fish, higher levels, higher reactivity in the, in the allergic reaction uh, test, but there were, the numbers were so small it wasn't statistically significant. I mean, I think that the number, it was a significant increase if you look simply at the 25% or 50% increase, but they used so few numbers as if to ensure that they showed no safety concerns, and yet they're releasing this food to the public. It's already being eaten in Canada. There's genetically modified trees. Um, there's over a million GM poplars, I think, um, planted in China, and they don't know exactly where they are, which ones are genetically engineered. There was a study that just came out uh, this week uh, saying that if they genetically engineer the American chestnut, there's no plan, there's no way that they can control that. You see, once you release a GMO into the environment, it cross-pollinates, it, it produces offspring, and it is part of the gene pool. And when you have a tree where pollen can fly for miles and there's a whole ecosystem in the bark and in the leaves and underneath, you're affecting an enormous amount and trees and forests affect the weather. If you, if you denude a, a land from a forest, you'll change the weather. You'll change the runoff. It'll be, it can be a disaster. We've seen that time and time again. And yet they're releasing trees that are less stiff, left lower lignin count, it's trees that can kill insects, um, which is, changes the whole ecosystem, you know, basically for lumber. You know, they're turning, they're turning these beings of trees into lump, you know, they don't think in terms of nature, they think in terms of industry. So for example, they want to genetically engineer out the mothering instinct of livestock. So you can take the, the children away from the 
mothers, the, the cows, etc., and they won't notice. They don't care. Because rather than making agriculture, with industry to fit agriculture, they're making agriculture to fit industry. So they want to genetically engineer algae, bacteria, fungus. There's been a, a glowfish on the market you can buy as a pet that glows in the dark. They've made puppies and cats glow in the dark in laboratories. It's amazing. But what's amazing is the disrespect for what we don't know. It, for years, scientists believed that one gene created one protein, created one trait. That was wrong. They also felt like because the functioning genes that produce proteins were only maybe 2% of our genome, 98% of our DNA, they considered junk genes. Now they realize those are important. They said RNA, just a way station between DNA and RNA and protein. Now it turns out RNA creates all sorts of regulatory changes. It is so much more complicated than they thought. It's not rocket science, it's way more complicated. And yet, in the face of that level of complexity, they dumb it down and dumb it down and say, well, we can take a gene out of this species and put it in here or change this, and these changes will happen, and we don't know exactly what will happen, but we'll assume that that's okay. And we'll release it into the environment so it's permanently part of nature and we'll feed it to people. Are there other techniques not called genetic modification that, in effect, manipulate the genetics of the plant that you are concerned about? There's ways of mutating genes through chemicals or radiation. Canola, for example, was oilseed rape where they took the seeds and exposed it to radiation so that the new plants produced a lower amount of a toxin that was deadly, and so they called that a healthy plant and a healthy oil. And there's very little follow-up and research into what other things might have changed, etc. So I am concerned about what's called mutagenesis and and chemical mutagenesis, et cetera. But it's not my area of expertise. My focus has been on genetic engineering, which is the transfer of genes from one species, the gene editing, et cetera. And there's plenty of evidence showing that those are dangerous.